Hi, this is Seth Fleischman with World History by a Jew. I told Dr. Josh and Megan I'd give them an assist with some of their uh, Mesopotamian math. Uh, if you watch their earlier videos, they said that math wasn't really their thing, so math happens to be my thing. And I have my own lecture series. I told them I'd give them a, a hand. Uh, you can look up World History by a Jew on YouTube and you're going to find nothing. This is the first time I've ever done a YouTube video. I do all my lectures in person for charities and normally I do say at weekend events full of history and uh, and I'll speak two or three times over the course of that weekend but I'm never on film so congratulations for seeing me on film for the first time so let's jump right into Mesopotamian math so what makes Mesopotamian math different than our current math is we use a 10 base system in fact most of the world uses a 10 base system uh, and Archaeologists believe that it just goes back to us having 10 digits. So you count 10 on your, on your fingers, and that's the easiest way to start off as your base with math. But in ancient Mesopotamia, they had a different system called six base. And six base is, uh, is much better for when you're, we'll say our pre-computer days, for when we don't have everything written down, and even going back further than that. So why you need a six base is instead of dealing with 100, as your core number, you have 60 as your core number. And the advantage of the number 60 is how many ways you can divide it. So when you look at 100, right, you can know you can divide 1 into it, of course, every number. Then 2, okay, you get 50. You can divide into 4, you get 25. And you can divide into 5, okay, 20. But then it, it kind of falls apart after that. So you know of the first six numbers, you can divide evenly into it with four of those. Well, when you have a base 60, all six of the first numbers you can divide into. So one divided into 60, of course. Then you have two into 60, so 30. You have three into 60, so 20. Four into 60 is 15. And five into 60 is 12. And six into 60 is 10 each. So what the advantage of that is, by being able to divide through one through six, that's a huge advantage with fractions. And you're dealing with partial payments or partial amounts to have that six base and have a solid number to represent the fraction is a tremendous advantage, which is what the Mesopotamians figured out at a very early stage. Now, they've left us a, uh, a legacy, which I'll get to in just a second, but what I wanted to mention first is the Mesopotamians are not the only ones who noticed the advantage of the six base. Since Megan is from the UK, she'd appreciate that pre-1971, the British also used a modified six base system Right, so we know if you think about the your Charles Dickens novels, or uh, when you have your 240 pence and it equals your one pound sterling, and 12 pence equals a shilling, and, and uh, six pence equals half a shilling, then this gives you the, this this same base that the British used is what the Mesopotamians used. Now, I'm not saying the British system was based on the Mesopotamians, uh, but it has the same logic behind it, the same reason for using it. And by the way, that old system that went away in 1971 did last about 1,200 years. So this, it was started being used somewhere in the probably late 700s. And like I said, it didn't go out until 1971. So let's talk about some other six base numbers in Mesopotamia. So all their weights and measures were based on, on this core uh, this this core 60 number. So let's look at a talent. And by the way, anyone who's read about Greek history or Roman history is familiar with a talent. Well, to the Mesopotamians, a talent was about 30 kilograms, uh, but kilogram was not a measure they use. It's a measure we use. It's just fortunate that it's still it's a pretty even number to remember. But what you what you may not realize is that one talent divided up into six mina, and six mina then divided up into 3,600 shekels. So here we have shekels, which is another familiar number to all of us, right? Because if you know anything about Israeli currency, it's in shekels. And uh, th this is the same idea. Uh, I won't get too much in the monetary system, but kesef, which means silver to in Hebrew, also means money in Hebrew. So silver was their base system. And that, that, tiny, that tiny weight that you'd start with would be a shekel. So 3,600 shekels equals 60 mina, which equals one talent, all using that 6 and 60 number. And then you have the, the Baringa. So the Baringa was, was equivalent to a liter, approximately. And if you had 60 sila, you had a Baringa. And if you had 3,600 gin, then you had a sila. So 
Again, 60-60-60. I'll tell you another little, uh, another little trick, and this is, as I said in the beginning, we think that everyone started with this 10 base just based on us having 10 digits. Well, there are some that argue that the Mesopotamians actually had a different way of counting. So instead of doing this 1, 2, 3, 4, it said they take one hand and they count each of the bones in their fingers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So they could get to 12 using one hand, which would be a distinct advantage when you don't have anything to write down and you're counting with your fingers. So now let's, let's look at a legacy, some legacies to, to the system uh, of the Mesopotamians, because we're, we still have uh, some leftovers in our society today. One is, let's look at an hour, right? That's probably the first thing everyone thought about. When you have one hour equals 60 minutes, which equals 60 seconds, we can thank the Mesopotamians for that. And let's, let's look at geographic coordinates, right? Geographic coordinates also use this minute system. Uh, again, thanks to them. And, and then let's look at circles, right? So circles, 360 degrees. 360 degrees is, again, has the six base, and we're dealing with the 60. And, and so six times 60 equals 360. And now let's look at the sky as a big circle. Now the sky, if you look at it in 360 degrees, you would notice how celeste, as you're watching the sky every night, you'd see these celestial entities kind of crossing the sky. So the Mesopotamians divided the sky up, this 360 degrees, into 12 equal portions. And each of those 12 equal portions took around the cycle of a moon in order for them to pass. So that's where we get a month, right? So the moon, the month became the month. And they had a lunar calendar based on that. And then what, wherever, whatever the stars were aligned, whatever the alignment was when you were born, the Mesopotamians believed that this had an influence on your future. This, the, now, you would always, could always be influenced by what you see out in space, but the most, the, the most impactful configuration of these celestial spheres would be the month that you were born. And so that was one twelfth of the sky. That was during one one of the months or moons. And then that, of course, leads to the zodiac. So when when you talk about the zodiac system, this horoscopes and, and so on, that people still follow some in the newspaper today. Uh, I happen to think it's a little bit of a pseudoscience, but it, for those who do follow it today, you can thank the Mesopotamians. And if you want proof of that then just go back to the Greeks, because the Greeks would call their, their astrologers by either the name Babylonians or Chaldeans. So again, this, this shows you the, the, the recognition even by the Greeks of this, this horoscope system thing that the Mesopotamians developed, specifically the Babylonians. And of course, it goes back to the 60 base that I started with, and, and so the next time you see a horoscope in the newspaper or you see a coordinate on a map or the next time you just look at your watch, you can thank the Mesopotamians and their map.